Hello and welcome to my tutorial. Today I'm going to be giving you a beginner's lesson on how to use Anime Studio and Anime Studio Pro. Right, let's take a look at the studio. So this is the Anime Studio interface. Here you will be able to draw and make your own animations. First we're going to look at the toolbox. The toolbox contains all of your drawing, boning, group and camera tools. For drawing your character you have the choice of the draw shape tool which is represented by three small shapes and the freehand tool, this is the pencil. The shape tool will create a shape of your choice anywhere on the screen. Simply click the icon, pick a shape from the tab above and draw your shape. The pencil tool works much in the same way, just click the pencil and draw your line where you want it. Above the pencil and vector tools you have the select points and translate points tools. These are represented by a small broken line square and a cross. On the right hand side next to them you have the enlarge points and rotate points icons. So now we're going to look at the fill tools. The tools we're going to use in this project are the basic paint bucket and the line width tools. To use the paint bucket tool simply select the paint bucket icon and click the colour you wish the shape to be from the palette on the right hand side of the interface. Then click inside the area that you want the colour. The line width tool which is represented by a small black triangle allows you to make your lines thicker and thinner. By simply selecting the points that you wish to affect, selecting the line width tool and placing your cursor over the affected area then scroll right or left. On the right hand bottom side of your interface you'll find the layers window. There's loads of different layers to choose from but today we're going to talk about vector layers and bone layers. The vector layer is basically your cell, that's what you draw your image onto. The bone layer is a group layer that allows you to group your cells together inside of that layer and control the character's movement once rigged. So now we're going to draw our character using the draw and fill tools that I've shown you. Ok, so first I select the shape tool and I select a shape from the top bar and that's going to be a circle for our character's head. I copied and pasted the character, control C, control V and then I just made the shape smaller so we've got a circle for our stick man's head and then I'm just painting it, painting it using the paint bucket tool in black and then what I'm doing is I'm just selecting the points and resizing it with the resize points tool and the translate points tool so we've got a little bit more room to draw the rest of our body and then putting him to the top. Now what I'm going to do is on the same vector on the same layer sorry I'm going to draw a new vector and that's going to be a square and that's going to be the torso of our character and right here I'm just painting it in black also when you do this you'll probably want two points, one point either side of the square in the centre, you'll see me do that later on in the video, I actually forgot to do it at this point. And now we've, just, now we've got that, we're just going to make a new vector layer and we're going to draw our arms with the pencil tool. So all you need to do is just draw a straight line out and then you'll see there'll be a bunch of points on your screen. So now you're just going to move those points around until you have an arm. And what I'm doing there is I'm just moving that point up to the middle and I'll press Control P and that makes that an actual point or a peak. And if you wanted a rounded edge, you could press Control M and that gives you a rounded edge on your point as opposed to a point. And now what I'm doing is I'm just I'm just making the line thicker using the line width tool. Uh, so it looks similar to the rest and in proportion to the character. And now what I'm doing is I've duplicated the layer and I've just flipped it over using the flip the layer tool which, which appears on your top tab when you click the layer and I've just moved it in so we've got a stick man with arms beginning to work out just changing it about. Okay now I'm going to do exactly the same thing but with the legs so I've just duplicated the arm again and I've pulled it down and I'm just moving the leg around to make it look a little bit more like a leg and less like the arm and then I'm going to do and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing duplicate that flip it over so we've got the opposing leg on the other side 
And remember, this isn't about drawing. This is just about how to use the Anemi Studio software. Okay, so now, now I want to rescale the whole, whole thing. To do that, we're going to put it into another layer, and that's going to be a bone layer. And then after that, we're going to use the bone layer to put the bones onto our character. So what I'm doing is I'm just popping all those layers inside of that and closing that up. And then I'm just renaming that. You also want to rename every single layer inside of your project because if you don't, by the time you've got to backgrounds and stuff on your project, you'll get very confused. And now I am just moving the layer about so we we can see our stick man. And there we have it. Now we're going to look at the bones section of our toolbox and talk about how to add bones to our character. In this example, I'll be adding bones to this arm, which is slightly more complex than our Stickman project, but should allow some of the more ambitious of you to see what quality stuff can be done with this software. Then later in the video, you can see me add bones to our Stickman. So first, all of our layers now need to be inside of a bone group. Once you have your complete character, inside the bone group you are ready to add bones to your project. Simply click the add bone icon on the toolbox. Add bone is represented by a bone with a small plus sign under it. Once you have the add bone selected you can draw on your bones. To do this click your cursor over the area you wish to affect. So now we have one bone added. Once we've done that we can go ahead and just add our next bone. Our top bone will affect the top half of our arm, everything above the elbow. The next bone will affect the lower part of our arm. It's important that when you add bones that you don't go outside of the confines of your character and that each bone is the same size as the area that you wish to influence. Once these two are in place it's time for the final bone to be added. Once we've done that we need to give each bone a strength. This process allows the software to know which bone controls what part and how much of the image. The bone strength icon is represented by a bone with an oval shape around it. Once you click on this icon, you'll notice that your bones now have big coloured oval shapes around them. This shape represents the strength of each bone. So what we're going to do here is pull each bone in until the strength is inside the vector you wish it to control. To do this, click the strength and select the bone you wish to affect. Then move your cursor left or right to change the strength. Once you've done that, there's just one final part of a simple rigging project like this, and that's reparenting. Reparenting allows you to dictate which bone controls which bone and in which order they are controlled. Here we have drawn our bones in the right order. Lastly, they are connected correctly. The reparent bone tool is represented by two small circles connected by a line. Okay, so now we're going to add bones to our character using the tools that I've shown you. First, what I'm going to do is just go into our stick man and add the points into the center of the torso. And that is using the add points tool. Okay, so we've got two and I'm just repositioning them so they're fairly equal about halfway through the body. And then that'll allow our character to bend in the right place. Okay, so we're going to add our first bone. Where you first click from is the point where your bone bends. So the first one comes out and then we're going a bone up from that so then your body will bend in the middle and then another one up from that as the head and then coming away from them we're going to have two for the arms and just make sure that you're adding the adding your bones roughly in between where your points are and then two more for the legs so the process is very similar to what we've already done with the arm Okay, so we've done that, and now we're going to add the strengths to each bone. We're just going to pull them again into about roughly the size of where the vector is. So, that, so the strength is actually going to be quite small there. Once you've done that, it's time to reparent. Now, your reparenting will be a little bit harder this time. Okay, so you can see that the lines are all crazy all over the place. What you need to do is click the bone that you want to reparent and then parent it over. So basically, it should follow a simple skeleton shape. So what we're doing is I'm just clicking each bone and then I'm clicking the parent bone and then clicking the bone that I want that to 
be parented to. And then I'm done. Your character is now ready to animate. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about animating your character. The first thing you need to do is select the Manipulate Points tool. Manipulate Points can be found on the second row of the Bone Tools at the far right hand side of the toolbox. It is represented by a bone with two arrows pulling away from it. Once you have this selected, it's time to start your animation. All of your animation will happen on the timeline. Now we're going to go to frame 1. You do that by pulling your cursor to the red line and pull across to frame 1. On the top of the timeline, just right of centre of the page, you can see two time counters. Now your first counter should read 1. Once you've done that, click the blank space in your screen viewer. Now you have your keyframe set. Once you've done this, you'll notice that you have two bones appear on your screen, one red and one blue. Next to those, you have two dots. They are a visual representation on your timeline of your key frames. Well, that's all we have time for today. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial and that you've learned some techniques that will soon have you on the road to fantastic animation with this brilliant software. Thanks for watching.